Welcome to the Life of Hair. My name is James Atkinson. Thank you for joining me in this week's episode. Now, this week's episode is a follow on from what I was talking about in the last episode, where I'm just showing you the sort of contemporary slash commercial work that I do day in, day out in the salon. So this isn't a fancy choreographed piece of, you know, hair education. But nevertheless, I hope you can take away some really useful tips and tricks. Now, I have done this haircut previously on the channel, but I did it on a mannequin head. It's probably my most successful video, I would say, on the channel, or one of the most successful videos on the channel. And I'm super pleased to be able to bring that technique to life on a client. So I hope you enjoy it. You've read the description, you know what you're in for, but I am trying my utmost to bring these haircuts to you in a way that they're usable to you. You can just take them away and use them on your clients if you're not in a lockdown, which I currently am, unfortunately, and everybody else in the UK at the moment and anywhere else you happen to be in a lockdown, Scotland, Wales, uh, some parts of America, ugh, craziness. Anyway, look, if you are in that situation, then my thoughts are with you. It has been particularly tough this third lockdown for me mentally. I've really, it's been, a, it's been a heavy going time and I'm sure a lot of you feel the same way. So just want to let you know that I'm with you in thought um, and not in person because you know, social distance, all that jazz. Um, listen, if you enjoy this week's episode, please do me the massive favor of sharing it with your friends. Lots of people have got nothing to do. They don't necessarily know about my channel. Put it on your Facebook pages, share it on Facebook groups distribute it to a wider audience you'd be doing them and me a favor hit that thumbs up button comment chat to me down below you know get involved it really is fantastic to hear from you guys and i will see you again very soon for another episode of the life of hair this week next week sometime very soon see you soon bye first things first pre-section pre-section is always important in my book doesn't have to be really crazy complicated pre-section but some way of breaking the hair down into something that's a bit more manageable. In this particular instance we're going to do what I do a lot uh, which is break the hair down from the highest point of the head to the back of the ear. This is where the hair changes density front to back because the hairline drops down at the back behind the ear so we've got less hair in the front and more hair, sorry re rewind, more hair in the back and less hair in the front. No, I did say that right. Um, so it's really, really important that we recognize that because it does affect the balance of this particular haircut and any any haircut you do, you know, that is one of the big transition areas. You know, if you're cutting a graduated bob, you can easily get a hole in there and lots and lots of different things can go wrong when we're talking about doing uh, a haircut you know and not identifying the areas on the head that can make a big difference or impact the way that we achieve our result so the next thing that i'm going to do is section off a diagonal backwards section that is mirroring the front hairline now this is really important because obviously we want to ensure with this particular look that we are cutting deep enough back into the hair that lives around the face. So lots of people have been saying Farrah Fawcett, you know, can we do a Farrah Fawcett type uh, haircut demonstration? This is how you would cut that. I mean, I could do a demonstration and blow dry it in that particular way, but if you're watching this and wondering why the description says Farrah Fawcett, um, it's just because you can cut a Farrah Fawcett in exactly this way to create that sort of backwards flicking motion. Now in this sense, we're gonna dry this naturally, so it's perfect for curly hair as well. It's perfect on straight hair. It's, it's just a great all round haircut. It's why it's one of my most used um, commercial haircuts. So the first thing we're gonna do is take a horizontal section and we're going to measure where we want the shortest part of this haircut to be. So in the instance of this particular haircut, we want the shortest part, because it's curly, it's gonna jump up, um, now the front's not as curly as the back, so that's one thing that we do have to bear in mind. Uh, but we want the shortest part to sit kind of just 
eyebrow-ish type level. Um, so we're going to pull the hair straight out from the head, which is elevation, which is going to automatically create a softer line when the hair falls back down into natural fall. So that's something to definitely, definitely bear in mind. And we need to kind of assess that our hair is obviously going to shrink, but by how much? So that is something that you do in the dry phase in the consultation you know asking questions like is your hair curlier in different places things like that is a really important question so each subsequent section that we take now is going to be pulled forward and twisted round which creates elevation through the side but we're going to look like we're going to be cutting off loads and loads and loads of hair which we are going to be cutting off a lot of hair in the front but we want to retain all the hair towards the back especially in this instance which we're going to make some minor modifications to this particular um, technique over what I've done previously on the channel on the mannequin head where um, my client gets a little bit nervous about losing too much of the length in the back and it being kind of too so I'll talk about that as it happens um, but you always have to be able to think on your feet and modify these things as you need to um, about halfway through this haircut, she gets really, really nervous, um, you know, and, and clients do that, don't they? You know, that's what happens when you're cutting someone's hair uh, and you might have to pivot what you're doing. You might have to, to make them feel better about the outcome. But as you can see, what we're doing here is we're just cutting everything on that invisible square line at the front, just like you'd cut a graduated bob shape with that invisible square line at the back. This is long graduation. Always double check for length before you move on. You can see here that I've gone back and adjusted in that front corner. So I've got two sections that finish in exactly the same place. I'm double checking to make sure that I'm completely happy before I move on. Because if you make a mistake in these early stages, it's amplified later. So now I'm going to take a section vertically down the head to approximately the top of the ear. Now I know the first section was diagonally backwards but each subsequent section mirrors the section we took from the highest point of the head down to the back of the ear. I hope that is nice and clear for you guys. You can see it pretty clearly on the screen right now. What we're still doing is twisting that hair so it's going from horizontal straight out from the head and it's coming out and we're twisting it up to a square line that is in the front. Now lots of hair comes off at this point and this is when the clients start to get a little bit scared that they're going to end up with a pixie cut and no length at the back. But, but providing we twist the sections, we over direct everything forward, everything will be okay. We will retain the majority of the length in the back but it will taper down into a point. This is uh, something else that a lot of people have requested is, uh, you know, the, a pointy haircut. Well, if we did everything in this uh, technique to the point where we cut all the length and it would taper down into a very steep point in the back, that is the nature of this haircut. But we're not going to do that today because, as I said, about halfway through this, she has a little bit of a moment where she feels like a lot of hair is coming off, which it is. Um, but uh, and, and we pivot, you know, the way we were going to do it uh, to do something new. We're just following this exact same principle all the way through, combing the hair forward, pivoting our fingers and cutting a square line that travels towards the back. So we can see now we've created a very, very steep angle that points right down towards the back hairline. It's about this point that I think she starts to panic a little bit about how short it is through that opposite side. Now the reason I've turned my client's head like that is because you want to be standing in roughly the same place. So you can either swap sides or you can turn your client's head towards you or you can just turn your client around and cut it facing you. It's entirely your call. Whichever one you're comfortable with, there is no benefit as long as you're aware that what you're doing is you're pivoting the head around to ensure that you repeat what you did on the right hand side in this instance on the left hand side and if you've just cut the left hand side the same rules apply so it is very very important to bear that in mind in this particular instance so we're going to continue through this 
haircut doing exactly what we've done until we get to the back where we're going to sort of change tact a little bit um, just because as I say the nerves have set in for her and uh, she's definitely feeling a little bit anxious at this point in time now she'd wanted this haircut for a really really long time um, but it like a lot of haircuts some people don't necessarily know before what's involved so I guess I could have told her how much hair would come off but then sometimes that impacts the creativity or the amount of um, you know what you want to create they can start saying oh can we not cut that off but then you're not going to create a pure shape so just be very very confident that you're creating what you want to create and just continue moving on now at this point i showed her the back push forward which made her feel a lot more comfortable um, so we're moving on to the back sections now we're going to take a vertical section that travels from the highest point of the head down towards the back right hand corner of her hairline at the back and we're going to pull the hair all the way forward to the front hairline now in a second we're going to make a modification to this uh, particular haircut in a pure sense we would just simply over direct every single section to the front hairline pivoting around the head till we get to the center back and then we would swap sides and do exactly the same on the opposite side but it's right at this point where I cut this particular section and you can see her eyeballing the hair that we have this kind of moment of can it be fuller in the front is that achievable which it definitely is so what I go then to do is I disconnect some of the hairline which you'll see I think just after I've cut this section if my memory serves me right um, and by disconnecting the hairline at the back we're obviously going to retain more of the length and more of the corner in the back so it's not going to taper quite so steeply into the middle now she wouldn't have lost any of the length in the center back because of bringing the hair forward and twisting our fingers but because she's a little bit nervous which is fair enough um, she now wants me to disconnect or uh, keep more length in the corner so I've just disconnected the hairline very quickly you've just seen me do that and I am now instead of cutting and pivoting I'm changed my finger angle and I'm cutting diagonally towards myself so I'm scooping to create more length and more weight in the back now I think if I was going to cut this again on this particular client she'd be more than happy for me to just do it in the purest form but because she was a little bit nervous at this point this was the safest option and it's a great thing for you guys to see that you know it's a good opportunity to just change what you do so we've taken a horizontal section now from just underneath the occipital bone through to the center back of the ear and we're going to do exactly what we did previously we're going to pull that first section square but then we're going to angle our fingers down and scoop away some of the length just to build up a bit more weight and length towards the back so that the client feels like she's got a bit more length in the center back and towards the corners at the shoulders as well rather than it tapering right down this is that point where obviously we change tact and this means that we're also not pivoting like this because it's very difficult to scoop with a pivoted finger angle so I'm keeping my fingers facing towards me and I'm just cutting like with us not a slice cutting action but just a, a, a working down the hair now on the opposite side because I'm right-handed I have to change what I do again slightly but it hasn't have any uh, specific detrimental impact on the balance of the haircut it's just a right hand left hand impingement and I could have cut this right hand side by slicing should I have had uh, the forethought to do that but because I was improvising because of some changes that were made right in the middle of the haircut obviously you know you have only got 
the forethought for so much I would have probably just preferred to have sliced down towards the length but that didn't happen and so that's why I do this left hand side in the way that I probably should have done the, the right hand side there but you know we live and we learn so before I do this um, left hand side I'm going to obviously take that horizontal section that matches the part that we disconnected just so that I can be sure that I remember to disconnect um, that small area of hair and I've got a similar amount of hair on both sides um, so I haven't got a heavier left side compared to the right side or vice versa but remember this first section that came down towards the back of the ear we just cut in exactly the same fashion uh, as we did the previous section but we're going to slide cut now down which is a similar technique to what I used on the opposite side but just a little bit easier so it's at this point a bit like when we cut that very first section in the front that we're going to cross check now lots of people could argue probably want to cross check a bit sooner there were times where I did cross check this haircut but I just didn't show you but there are two pivotal points in this haircut that you must cross check the first section and this section now the one behind the ears because some people's hairlines drop away severely on one side and not so much on the other and vice versa things change at this point so it's really important that we take two pieces of hair from exactly the same place and measure those pieces of hair because it's graduation if they're not from the same place it can feel different so it's really uber important that you make sure that you get the hair from exactly the same place now you can see I've got a bit of hair here that is substantially longer on this right side so I've just come back and cut it off and then I'm subsequently going to have to go back and work through this right hand side again to blend all that hair in but that's okay because you know we haven't got too far into the haircut before I've acknowledged that as a problem so we're now going to get back on with our left hand side and do exactly as we did with our right hand side we're going to pull the hair forward we're going to lift it up horizontally 90 degrees relevant to the floor and we're going to pivot our sections until we get to the sections that come from right round the back there and we are going to slide cut our sections through towards the outline super simple super easy to do this is actually a really really quick haircut to do in the salon I can get this whole haircut done shampooed cut dried the whole nine yards in under 45 minutes especially if I'm going to diffuse it and not kind of amplify the wave in any way shape or form but in this particular case we're just going to diffuse it nice and naturally nice and easy um, because she's got a great natural texture to her hair and this haircut was really about creating or amplifying that texture a little bit further so nice and easy here to finish I think this one is my final section and we're just going to slice down towards the perimeter in a second after cutting this particular section and it's getting that uh, elevation right all the way throughout and then just to retain that extra little bit of length slide cutting down towards the perimeter in these final sections and Guys, this is one of my absolute favourite haircuts. Honestly, I just love, love, love the way it looks. You can see there on the screen quickly uh, where I left that bit of disconnection from uh, the match, the previous side that we kind of improvised on and I could kind of put it in with a bit more forethought on this uh, second side. But the trick now, bit of hair product, some styling cream, a bit of beach sea salt spray in there to bring out as much of the texture as possible and then just diffuse it dry my personal favorite way of diffusing hair is with a diffuser bag this is the ys park diffuser bag it's actually uh, if you want to get your hands on one of these it's linked in the description down below uh, it's just been the best curly hair tool i've ever bought 
bar none. Um, and what I would say is I would normally tell people not to touch the hair once uh, you're drying it but with this particular look I wanted it to be a little bit fly away I didn't want it to be kind of super ringlety I wanted it to have like a softer texture so I was just twiddling it there as I was drying it and here is the finished result I hope you like it guys and you can see that little bit of extra length there by her collarbones that was retained by using that scooping motion if we hadn't have done that that hair wouldn't have been there and it would have tapered into a very steep point in the back this guys as i've said many many times in this video is literally one of my favorite haircuts to cut i absolutely love it it makes cutting long hair so much more interesting um, obviously this is one variant on the shag or the mullet or the long graduation i know lots of people argue about you know what a long graduation, what a shag, what a mullet is, you know, but they're all fall into a similar category. You can just adjust the length dependent on your needs. So I hope you've enjoyed this particular episode and I'll catch you in the next one.